Let me introduce one of our special guests here in the studio. I'm with Japan's ambassador to Israel, Koji Tomita. Koji, thank you so much for being with us, sir. Appreciate your time. Do you think perhaps it is time to relocate embassies to Jerusalem? The U.S. is debating it. Maybe we'll do it. Is it that big of a deal if it happens? Well, I think, uh, of course, we are watching uh, very closely what uh, the United States is going to do. But as far as Japan is concerned, I think uh, it's not time to do something which might prejudice the uh, negotiation in the future. Yeah, we're hearing today from Jordan's king, Abdullah, that it could, would be the end of the peace process, that you can't negotiate in good faith the U.S., they can't broker a peace if they move the embassy. Is it that big of an obstacle, do you think, as a diplomat, if simply the embassy moves? Well, I think uh, Arab countries uh, regard this issue very seriously. So, uh, uh, again, I don't think it's a time to do something which uh, might endanger the resumption of the peace process. Uh, Mayor, what do you think here? Obviously, this is a long game that the United States has been playing, teasing the possibility, but reports are decision is imminent. I mean, how big, how consequential are we talking here? Well, the Japanese embassy uh, did move a few years ago from Weizmann Street to Berkowitz Street, just uh, a few meters down the road. So maybe it's uh, a step in the right direction. Now, uh, we are uh, into the uh, holy month of December, and uh, the um, uh, holidays are approaching, both uh, Christmas Eve and then New Year's. And there is a lot of pressure from evangelical quarters on President Trump. Now, what happens if he simply doesn't sign the waiver? It's an act of omission, which becomes an act of commission. Congress will have to deal with the consequences. We are going to be in limbo. He may suffice in uh, saying that Jerusalem is perceived as the capital of uh, Israel by the administration, not specifying any boundaries, and that once a Palestinian state is established, East Jerusalem will be its capital. Well, we'll see how, how this unfolds in the days ahead. Also developing today, big news with the Hamas Fatah reconciliation deal has been delayed by more than a week, Hamas controls Gaza. They agreed under the terms of a Cairo-backed negotiation that they would hand over full administrative control of the Gaza Strip to the West Bank-based Palestinian Authority. That final transfer of power was supposed to happen tomorrow. Now it's been delayed until at least December 10th. Hamas has handed over, though, security controls of the key Rafah border crossing with Egypt, but there are still other big hurdles, perhaps the biggest, the PA's insistence that Hamas disarm its powerful al-Qasim militia. Let me turn to the ambassador once again, because obviously you're hopeful that the peace process could be re resumed, that the unity government with, the, with Palestine is a big part of that. What are your thoughts on the fact that there is a big delay there are still big obstacles to a reconciliation. Well, of course, uh, we are um, uh, concerned about the continued uh, uh, rift between the Hamas and uh, uh, PAs. But at the same time, this is only a piece of uh, larger puzzles. So uh, uh, I don't want to speculate what is going to happen to this. But uh, again, what I want to see is uh, the resumption of the whole process, which requires uh, uh, various factors, not just uh, the question of reconciliation. Do you think, it, how important is it though eventually for on, come December 10th, let's say, if there is a unity government, if this decade-old rift ends, should Israel be in a position to negotiate in good faith? Well, Israeli has already uh, set out a certain set of conditions. Uh, so uh, I don't want to uh, put myself in a position to, to speculate what the uh, Israeli government is going to do, but uh, their position is very clear. And Mayor, uh, Ambassador, um, Japan has contributed uh, with largesse to the peace process uh, to the point of $1.77 billion, and uh, obviously one of your pet projects is the corridor of peace. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the issues in the reconciliation talks is money. Who will pay the salaries of those Hamas functionaries who are going to be out of work. Could Japan help in that area? Well, uh, this, this salary issue is a very complicated issue. And uh, I think it's, it's a little, little bit premature for Japan to consider any, any sort of uh, 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 role. Uh, first, I think uh, the issue has to be uh, clarified among the stakeholders then we might consider what we can do. How about um, a train, a Shinkansen, if you will, uh, between uh, Gaza and the West Bank? <laughs> well, uh, Japan, I mean, we are not a major player in terms of political uh, 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 mediation, 
but what what we, we the area in which we we think we can make a difference is improving the situation on the ground that is the reason why we're doing a lot of project in west bank and gaza so uh, we are open to uh, any any future projects. Well, <laughs> I'm not uh, uh, commenting on the specific project you mentioned. We'll see how things unfold. Again, the, the delay now is until December 10th. And again, a lot of international diplomats and ambassadors are waiting to see exactly what happens with this proposed reconciliation deal set to take place in two weeks. All right, so we're going to come back with the ambassador for a major news story, of course, to get the Japanese reaction to the North Korean ICBM launch. We'll talk about that next. Then ahead in the program... We'll move to the U.S. We're mo we will continue to protect the lives and livelihood of the people of Japan under the strong Japan-U.S. alliance. And I'm still with Japan's ambassador to Israel, Koji Tomita. Again, sir, thanks for staying with us. You are a diplomat. You believe in diplomacy. When it comes to North Korea, though, has diplomacy failed with the launch of this latest missile? Perhaps is it time for a military strike? Well, um... President uh, Trump has made it clear that all options are on the table, and uh, Prime Minister Abe supports this position. But still, I think it's still time that we should focus on diplomacy, and it's far too early to focus on military options. The UN this year alone approved three separate rounds of economic sanctions just this year. The U.S. put North Korea back on the list of state sponsors of terror. At some point, these sanctions don't appear to be working. The missiles are stronger and more powerful than ever, and they keep test firing them. Well, uh, first of all, these uh, measures taken by the United Nations uh, have to be implemented by the member countries. And uh, we, we have to wait uh, for some time before uh, to, to make sure that these uh, uh, sanctions are working. And uh, we also have to work, talk with the uh, various members so that uh, to, to make sure that uh, these measures uh, are implemented correctly. So still too early, you think, to, to even consider a military strike, a preemptive? I, I, I'm not going to put any uh, timetable, uh, but at the same time, I, I, as I said, uh, we should focus on diplomacy at the moment. As a diplomat, what do you make of the language and the rhetoric? Uh, Russia and China have largely put the blame sometimes back on Trump, on the president, for his needlessly aggressive rhetoric, his personal insults, his threats. Is President Trump, do you think, is America making this problem worse? Well, <laughs> this is exactly what it's all about, the diplomacy. So you use a various language, but in the important thing is that we are all heading in the right, I mean, the same direction. We are all united in our position to the uh, uh, d nuclearized North Korea, including the Russians and Chinese. So we, we need to keep up the momentum. North Korea says they're already there. They have a nuclear bomb. They could put it on a warhead. This ICBM test may have been a game changer. You don't think it's a game changer in that regard? Well, uh, I, I don't think, uh, uh, of course, we have to be watch very closely. I mean, uh, definitely we are seeing an increase in sophistication of their weapon systems. But uh, it's not uh, uh, our, our, our responsibility to listen to everything uh, spoken by North Koreans. Can I ask you your thoughts on the debate that's going out back home in Japan about changing the constitution? Prime Minister Abe wants to see that happen. He's given a deadline for that for himself. You know, North Korea, these missiles sometimes are flying over Japan, right over the island. Sometimes they're, they're coming dangerously close off their coast. Should the constitution be changed to allow Japan's military to build up to better defend its citizens? Well, the, of course, the, uh, the Prime Minister has made it clear that uh, he, he, uh, uh, his intention to put this uh, issue on the uh, political agenda. But at the same time, Constitution uh, Amendment is not going to be uh, not solely on the question of uh, military policy, you see. And, uh, He's pushing for the Constitution to yeah, be changed by the Olympics. Do you think that's <laughs> a good idea? Well, at the same time, he's, he's uh, make it, uh, making it very clear that he's not going to be constrained by any fixed timetable. Now, as I say, this is not going to be only about peace, uh, military policy. And uh, uh, also, this is, uh, I think, uh, Prime Minister is going to take a consensual approach, engaging the general public 
other political parties and so on so forth. This is going to be a national debate. One last question. Uh, you know, we're hearing the words from America, but right after that ICBM launch, South Korea did its own military drills, live fire uh, defense drills. Is that concerning as well? I mean, what, what should happen with your allies in, in Asia when there is an ICBM launch? Well, uh, this, I think this shows that uh, uh, how closely we're watching the, uh, the situation in North Korea. I mean, the, the, the timing immediately after um, the South Korea make a quick response, I think that the evidence of how closely we are watching the situation, whether or not uh, we have uh, enough uh, 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 asset to respond to the situation, I am not going to make any specific comment, but I think we are ready. You're ready. All right, Ambassador Koji Tomita, thank you so much for being part of the, part of the show. 